Hello and welcome back. I'm joined by Eric. Congratulations. 4 and 0 has got to feel pretty good. You are correct. Feels <laughs> great. I love winning. Never gets old. It feels better than losing, yeah? You ever get tired of winning? Uh, I'll let Eric, you know if that ever happens. Your board game championships you guys go in and just crush every year. <laughs> you ever just yeah, like, that is the ah, half. Another win. Little board game championships. So, stacks, huh? Yeah. Or Martello shops, anyway. I don't know the names of Stacks decks. You got me. It's some form of workshop. There's workshops. We're just all from the LSB school where every workshop deck is Stacks, even though Smoke Stacks haven't been played in years. Yeah. Oh, yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's kind of uh, how, that's how Kai was calling them, too. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I know. You still play Smoke Stacks. Don't get mad at me, shops players out there. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a similar deck. You have workshops and you have a bunch of Sphere Effects and the last, you know, eight to ten cards, I guess, can vary, but. The general game plan is kind of what it is. Like, it might be smoke stack and crucible. It might just be Ford's master and get a giant fatty, and uh, they're all good. Yeah. No, that makes sense. What did What did you think Kai was going to be on? Stacks. You had Kai on the stacks. You were ready for well, the mirror. We both knew. We all like I say both. All ten of us knew that Kai was not going to play Delver. Sure. <laughs> after what happened in the first set. So where is Kai going to go from there? Um, doesn't seem like the dredge type of guy, but he definitely is the type that loves a really powerful deck that uh, maybe isn't being represented as much as it should, and workshop decks are really strong. I mean, we've heard Rich Shea, I believe, said all of Season 1 that he thought workshops was a powerful strategy in Vintage. Of course, Treasure Cruise got printed, and Delver is ridiculous, and I think Delver is the best strategy right now, and I definitely considered playing Delver nine weeks in a row and just riding it out because, you know, the... Delver's an interesting deck. Like I, I talk a lot of vintage with a lot of people. I've been presented a lot of deck lists from my friends, and honestly, every deck I look at, I'm like, that's bad Delver. Like, 50 cards are the same. The counters, the card draw, the lands are all very similar. And then you're playing, you know, a different win condition instead of the card Delver and Young Firemancer, and that's just bad Delver to me. So um, I really like Delver, and uh, I kind of just wanted to play something different, though. Like, I've been wanting to play a deck that had workshops for a while. I've never got to play workshops before. I'd like to try to show off a little bit more range and just get some experience with the deck at the very least. And, um, yeah, I've played blue decks four times, and I figured I'd probably be kicking myself and pulling a Pakula of starting 3-0 and then 0 3 with Workshop in the next weeks and just feeling miserable about life. But my draws were good again, and I, I've been fortunate with my draws. And I think uh, the, the die roll is very important with a stack deck or any kind of stack deck because... You get out that sphere effect before they play anything, or that chalice before they play anything, and it lights out. And so, uh, getting off the schneid and winning the first week after losing the roll in two games, Kai's draws weren't great, and my draws weren't very good. Feels good. Sure. Let's keep it rolling. All right, I got to ask you about the other card that I know people in chat keep asking about. What's your take on Monastery Mentor? Are we going to see any of it this week? Is this a for real vintage card? That's a great question. Um, are we going to see it this week? Yeah. I think I think someone's gonna play it. Um, okay. Is it real? I don't know because Young Power Mancer is really good, and Monastery Mentor is a more powerful card. It costs one more mana, and it's white. And red is super powerful in Vintage. The sideboard cards are great. Lightning Bolt's really good, but Swords might be good. To, I mean, I haven't got to play Swords in Vintage before in any deck, um, so I don't know if it's as powerful as Lightning Bolt. I think in most formats it's not, and it doesn't seem like it would be. But that could very much not be the case, especially if. People are playing cards like Worm Coil Engine from my deck, so uh, <laughs> it's a lot better there. And Monastery Mentor is just really strong. It kills fast, so uh, I think people will play it, and we will learn more about whether it's real because the deck has been doing, you know, pretty well in vintage tournaments across the globe. And mm -hmm. that doesn't necessarily mean a card is real, especially if it's getting overplayed in early hype stages. But uh, we'll find out really soon, I think. Yeah, I know. Slight technical difficulties, but I think we're going to get those worked out pretty quickly. I know that uh, I had a Vintage Daily with one deck I was thinking about playing, put up the quick 0-2 in the Vintage Daily, and there were Monastery Mentor decks at the bottom of the Swiss also. So it's not just in the 3-1 stage. They're kind of all over the standings. Yeah, um, Luis played a Monastery Mentor deck, he said, in one of the Vintage Dailies and told me he was very unimpressed with it. So uh, that... that limited my testing a little bit on the deck, especially because I kind of already wanted to play shops if I could, so uh, sure. that, that was where I was, where I was no, looking. No, that makes sense. Speaking of Luis, here's the showdown. 
last year's finals, right? These One of these guys was in first place every week of the season in season one. Uh, they wound up playing a tiebreaker for the one seed, which Steve won. They wound up playing in the finals after Luis knocked you out in the semis, and Steve won again. But one of the most watched games of the regular season last year was when Luis beat Steve in the in the regular season. So they guys have had quite the quite the set so far, quite the battles. Yeah, I mean, Steve has definitely proven his prowess with a vintage deck. Uh, no, no doubt that he knows what he's doing, knows what he's talking about. He's had a great run, having an, another good start. And Luis is, as we all know, one of the best players of all time and plays a lot of vintage. So that is a good combination to have. Um, no, no one ever wants to play against Luis in any format, and vintage is included in that mix now. Yeah, fair enough. I doubt, couldn't have set it up better myself. <laughs> now let's see what happens. Luis, I see an Oath of Druid, I see an Emrakul. This looks like the same deck Kai was on. It does look like the same deck Kai's on. <laughs> All right, so Oath of Druids with some omniscience flavor. I guess there must be a bunch of show and tells in the deck. Luis did seem awfully quick to uh, to mention the show and tell combo when he was commenting on, on Kai's match against you, I thought. Uh, I did not get to hear that part, and I, I actually didn't realize that uh, they were on similar decks. I, I play tested a little bit with Luis yesterday. He wanted to try this deck against Delver, and he uh, he beat me pretty soundly. Interesting. It wasn't very fun. Um, oh, Oath against Delver has got to be the most lopsided match in Vintage right now. Well, maybe Belcher against Shops is more lopsided, but Oath over Delver is crazy good. Yeah, either way, it's up there, and um, I would say. My draws weren't great against him, to be fair, but a lot of these games, I'd have these okay draws and lots of permission and backup. He'd just play Besiege you and show and tell something in. Just like, okay, like, <laughs> good beats. I can't beat it. Well, Luis kept this hand. This hand it looks horrendous. It plays a turn two oath. It does play a turn two oath, but. I mean, what do you think? If he thinks four more mulligans has creatures in his deck. This, this draw is great if he thinks Menendian has creatures in his deck. Right, if Menendian goes turn one, Delver is... And that is a Tundra. That, to me, says Monastery Mentor is in Steve's Menendian's list. That's who... I, nobody's I, playing Tundra other than the Mentor decks, right? Uh, Bomberman. That is another deck... Oh, I, it could be Bomberman. That's fair. I actually Bomberman's look tough Del to play on Magic Online, though, because it's so many clicks through the combo. Right, but, I mean, we have this gentleman's agreement now. If, if you get a... If you get the Bomberman going and play a Tassiger, everyone knows they're dead. So you can make them go through it. It was a concern I had because I, I did think about playing a similar deck to a Bomberman because I actually played some Bomberman before uh, Gifts on Given and Tass Tassiger were able to unleash their forces on Vintage. Sure. Okay. That, that... Monastery Mentor is this looks like a Delver hand and he has a Yeah, exactly. Deck. So Bomberman, if you guys don't know what we're talking about, is the combo between Ariok Salvagers with either Black Lotus or Lion's Eye Diamond. It's two mana to return a small artifact from your graveyard, but those guys, those two artifacts, either one of them will sack for three mana. So if you assemble Oriok Salvagers plus a Black Lotus, you have infinite mana. And then it's just a question of, okay, can you kill your opponent? Um, Spell Bombs have been the kill card of choice for Bomberman decks historically, but Tassiger might actually fill that role better. Because infinite mana plus Tassiger means you have your entire, you have any card you want from your entire deck. Right. And to cast it arbitrarily many times. It lets, it lets you play definitely less bad cards, which is nice, because uh, Tassiger is a big creature. It, it deals some oh, damage. Yeah. So um, exactly. definitely a threat. And, of course, once you have milled your entire deck, you can keep going Tassiger and return every card in your graveyard to your hand. You have infinite mana, so you have infinite counter spells, And then all you do is you Ancestral Recall targeting your opponent over and over and over again. So you're saying if, you're, if your victory condition is Ancestral Recall, that's not a bad card to have in your deck anyway? Even if that gets exiled, strangely enough, you could just do it with Time Walk. And you have to leave some cards in your deck or have some way to put some cards back yeah. uh, or have enough creatures that you can go off. But, uh, yeah, you can cast a bunch of Time Walks and just hit oh, them yeah. with four fives. So a few options there. So I guess we don't actually know that Steve is on Mentor yet. This could be Delver Splashing White, hypothetically. But, I mean, should, should, we saw Rick play that, but you kind of still assume that... Uh, Mentors will be in Delver Slash and White. Is it pretty good? Yeah, thing? you'd think. No guarantees. All right, Luis found a third land. He still has the Oath, but he's kind of slow rolling it. Now he has a Demonic Tutor, which he's going to go ahead and cast. And I'm sure he's thinking the same thing about Steve's Tundra that we're thinking, right? Yeah, I, I imagine so. 
Although he can't see his hand, so he doesn't know that these cards are typically Delver cards just sitting in his hand. So it, it could, again, be a different control deck, a Bomberman type deck. Um, there's other options, but yeah. Yeah, I certainly, if I saw Tundra, Flooded Strand, Sapphire, Preordain, Preordain, I'm strongly suspect, especially right now, I'm strongly suspecting Mentor. Yep. The big issue with Luis's hand and the one that he kept is that Let's see, he is playing against the Delver deck. If, if they have any permission at all, though, like, Luis had no backup. Like, having two dig through times that you are yep. six cards in your graveyard away from casting and two cards that cost more mana than you play in vintage decks, it's, you know, you have a turn two oath, but you really have nothing and no way to back up that oath. So if that if Steve just goes, like, turn one thought sees, <laughs> there goes your oath, and you're looking at a hand of zero cards, which is a rough place to be in uh, any format. So Steve let the Demonic Tutor resolve, mm -hmm. and Luis used it to, to get a Brainstorm. Right. It's an interesting sequence of decisions, don't you think? Um, I agree with both of them, but yes, it, it's definitely an interesting sequence of decisions. Steve's hand is so well protected against the world. He has uh -huh. misstep all the Force of Wills you want, and even in those strange scenarios where you get one of those quote-unquote uncounterable cards as we've seen, like Mind's Desire, he's got Fluster Storm, so kind of covered on all fronts there, which is nice. No reason to use a force. I mean, Luis one. could have gotten Forbidden Orchard. He could have gotten Forbidden Orchard, but Steve has enough t counters to counter it an Ocean. It only matters if it results. Um, there, there's yeah. no sequence right, to I'll have. Bet. Like, he needs to have Ocean Druid's Force Force, Blue Card, Blue Card, Fluster Storm, and that's more cards than you can have if he got a Forbidden Orchard, because that brings... All right, up. he could have gotten both Seiju. You could get the Seiju, yeah. That's very real. Um, and that's that's actually a great point. And I had one in his hand against you. Well, in week one, you that's not necessarily something you're thinking about. Like, he, sure. he has no idea that, that Luis is on a similar deck to what Kai's on, or that he's on, you know, on missions or anything. This looks like every deck Luis oh, plays. He could, be on, he could be on Doomsday, he could be on Bug Control, he could be on Gushy Bond that he played in the top four. He could be on so many things right now. All we see no, is Twitter right. and lands. But yeah, once you, you know that Sage is in his deck in future games, in future weeks, I agree with you completely. That's a great point. And this is where I think the game starts to unravel and Luis gets buried. Yeah. He really wants to shuffle that Emrakul into his deck with the fetch mm -hmm. land, but just the one mental misstep is going to stop it. Yeah. And now Steve gets an Ancestral. Oh, that looks like a bricked Ancestral. Can we see all the cards or is there one off the screen? There might be one more. Because I thought he had five cards. But... That's the card, though. I think it's the Scalding Tarn. Oh, that's Luis's Scalding Tarn. Never mind. Yeah, there's a Scalding Tarn at the far right of Steve's hand. So he did Ancestral in the land, land, land. Yeah, Luis has got to go for this. He even drew the Forbidden Orchard to make this awesome if it resolves. But yeah, it's I mean, not what this awesome. does is add another card to the graveyard. Dig through time yep. is basically turned on, and because yep. he worked so hard on this ancestral, this game's not over. It it really should have been, um, but uh, it, it's not. Mm. Source of Plasher is not a terrible card. Doesn't do much against Ember. <laughs> sure. Yeah, Ember's not going to come out of that oath though. Right. Well, Force Will is a pretty great draw. I mean, can actually force this dig through. And huh. yeah, your time is going to resolve. And Steve's drawn back to back plows after land, land, land. Right, Luis isn't actually going for it, but. Well, he knows Steve loves to hold onto a grip full of counters. Right. He knows Steve resolved an ancestral recall. Absolutely. I, I think. I don't blame Luis for slow playing this. No, absolutely. No, I agree. It's certainly reasonable, but. It is interesting that it would have resolved. <laughs> sure. Now, is Mental Misstep enough? It's also at seven cards. Probably Misstep oh, is Mystical, right? I'm not sure. He may, he may respond with him. Mm. Yeah, I, th I actually think he probably is just going to Misstep this. I mean, you don't know that you're going to get a great right. Misstep target. Ancestral's already in the yard. I like that line. He's 
two guys somehow always have the best matches. This one looked like it was going to be a blowout, and then oh, yeah. Steve's deck was like, no, 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 let's make this interesting. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> Steve drew a bunch of bricks, and Luis started with a bunch of bricks. So uh, Luis's draws have been much better since the game has kicked off from uh, the opening sevens. And yeah. Steve's deck is definitely sputtering quite a bit. He drew dig through time. That's not nothing. Oh, that's a good draw. I mean, Luis can only counter once. I mean, they can both counter once. The thing, Luis's draw is, like, Luis's hand is actually pretty good now because if he goes for dig through time, he gets ancestral in response. Um, Steve can fight over that with Force Will, which would allow um, Luis's dig through time to resolve without a fight and Force right. Will to resolve. Uh, if he wants to force through Ancestral or counter the dig, or maybe he'll find a better counter spell off the top. So, if Steve tries anything right now and Luis responds, things look like they're going to go really bad for Steve. It's a lot of patience from Luis to wait for this, you know? Yep. Luis has had under no pressure. He's under nothing. So, right. that, that's so he just didn't through. do anything. It's, it's hard to not do anything when you're playing Magic and you have dig through time in your hand. He even had two dig through times in his hand. <laughs> So just as you suspected, here's Ancestral's response to Steve making the first move, so which whether, Steve is probably going to force and probably should force. Right. I think he does have to force this. And then Luis gets to dig as a response, right? He can dig, he can force. The thing is, he's going to try his best to avoid getting blown out by Flusterstorm, although I'm not sure he can. So he may just have to play his hand as if Flusterstorm's not there. He's going to force first. Yep. Pitching the omniscience. See what you draw so you know what you want to dig for. Misdirection. Well, that doesn't actually do anything against No, it doesn't. You can't misdirect a dig through time. He could vamp before casting dig if he wanted to. Not sure that really helps. You're seeing so many cards anyway. I guess there's no reason to when you can just vamp anyway afterwards and uh, yeah. set up something nice. Well, if you were going to vamp, it would probably force the world. Oh, he sees both dig show and tell. Oh, uh, there we go. Oh, and counter magic. Wow, it takes show and tell oath. Sure, both are going to present potentially back four lands in a second. In game. Um, he would have loved a force of will. Yes. Yeah, if you were going to vampiric there, I think it would would have been for force. Or I, I mean, I don't know what one mana counters he has. In his hit a fluster storm or something like that. Fluster storm would be excellent. Sure. It would have been for a counter for the dig, but now he has to let Steve dig. Mm -hmm. Do we have any idea what Steve's looking at now? Two pirates and fluster storm and a monastery mentor. So feels like Luis is gonna resolve something good. I mean, Steve goes, what, pyro, pyro? That doesn't help. The oath will resolve. Yeah, it didn't sound like Steve had a way to stop the oath. He had pyro and flusterstorm as his permission. And misdirection, none of which stop both the druids. Nope. Interesting. He's going to go for pyro, pyro, huh? We'll get to find out what other creatures Luis has in his deck, because Emrakul's in his hand. <laughs> I'm going to go out on a limb and say Chris Holbrand will make an appearance in this deck. I believe Luis just vamps here, goes, gets Force Will, and has Oath with double counter back up. Um, he knows that Steve is unlikely to have more than two counters. Flusterstorm doesn't impact Oath of Druids itself. So, yep. it, like, Steve would have to have hit two counters off his dig because he didn't have any to cast during right. the big fight. And so he would have to have hit two off the dig, have the land that he played have already been in his hand, and then join a third counter. On his turn. Oh, he went and got both Seiju. That makes sense, too. So, yeah. Wow, and then he goes for the Oath, and he's just like, what? That resolves, too? Why <laughs> did I need this both Seiju for the next turn show and tell? He's an embarrassment of riches. Indeed. Wow, both Seiju who shelters all. Pay to life, but your instant or sorcery can't be countered. Pretty good. Oh, yeah. Especially in our metagame. <laughs> Steve drew Force of Will, which he would love to have had to point at that Oath of Druids. And would have worked if he pointed at that Oath of Druids. Well, with the Pyroblast, yeah. 
Here comes Gristlebrand. All right. Here comes Gristlebrand. It is going to get loud, but oh, Steve's not going to bother. He knows Luis gets to draw seven, and he knows Luis has a Boseju. He's not even going to make Luis go through it. Maybe he doesn't even want to show him that he has Source of Yeah, that, I, maybe that's the reason he just didn't want to cast Source of Cloudshare, because Steve is not the type to concede in those slots. He didn't concede against Dave when Dave was attacking for 60 damage. He assigned blockers. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, that was 32nd, right? That was just let Steve... I that, Look, I think you guys gave him more more guff about that than he deserved. 30 oh, it's, seconds. It's, all good it's, fun. it's good natured ripping. We've got a bunch of friends here, but um, the weird thing is, like, if he doesn't want to cast swords, you kind of still want to see does Luis use Bristlebrand? Can you see a few more cards? Because this deck's not not common. I don't think. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it, maybe it's more played than I think. And Steve knows the contents better than I do. In which case, seeing more cards not as relevant. But when someone well, the omniscience did get, he did see an omniscience yeah. get pitched to uh, to a force of will. He so he's seen omniscience. That's yeah. that's a huge tell. No, you're right. This is not a common deck at all. I will say though that if I'm Steve Menendian in this scenario, playing this matchup, I'm gonna lose this game to Gristlebrand, right? Ninety yeah. what? Ninety eight percent of the time? Ninety nine percent of the time? More. I mean, it's probably yeah. north of ninety ninety nine percent. Yeah. I want to make sure I have time to win game two and three. You're worried about the clock? A little bit. <laughs> I mean, you're Steve Menendian oh, in this about hypothetical. It. You're Steve Menendian in this hypothetical. You're not you. Yeah, no, no, that, that, you're right. I haven't thought about it. As someone who has one unintentional draw in 20 years of playing Magic, it's not something that's ever crossed my mind. Invented Super League with double clocks, but uh, that is actually a fair point. It's true. Um, I mean, the there was... There was... I, I think there were multiple matches last year where Steve used more than 40 minutes. I mean, last year we had 60-minute clocks. We moved it to 40-minute clocks. He was playing Doom. I don't know. I mean, that, match, that that game certainly didn't take all that long, but like I said, he's got to win two games three. Yeah, the one, the one thing I was curious about when I was sideboarding against Kai was trying to figure out whether they had Voltaic Key Time Low. Um, I didn't know whether to leave in anything that might disrupt that. So that would be the one thing I'd want to see. It looks like they are not there, so... From everything we've seen, but that, that's the one point of contention, I guess. You know, that makes sense. Playing mentor, so, not straight blue red, means wear tear gets to be boarded in, which is pretty nice. Except, I, I'm fairly certain that this deck turns into pure show and tell post sideboard, and does not you play. Think? Oaths, I think. You take out the oaths. Everyone comes equipped that's with lots of ways to deal with oath of druids, and honestly, it's not that hard a card to deal with. Like. You bring in your disenchants and you bring in your all your graph diggers cages and they just don't do anything anymore. Against a show and tell deck. Wow. Okay, now I'm intrigued by this deck. <laughs> Before it was just yeah, oath oath after sideboarding is not great. You make a great point. Yeah, oath after sideboarding, that's the problem with oath decks in my mind, is that there's so many graph diggers cages out there. It's true. Um I don't know if you've taken a look at these hands, but there is a reasonable chance that Luis gets his ancestral misdirected again. <laughs> I've lost count of how many times it is because I just ran out of fingers on my hands to count how many times <laughs> Steve has misdirected the Luis ancestral. But we are very set up for that to happen again. <laughs> if Luis draws another blue card, he can potentially protect it, although not anymore from Steve's hand. Um, wow. Yeah, there's almost no way to stop it from getting misdirected if that happens. If he goes for it, why would he not? Okay, he's going to misstep the ponder. Which makes sense to me. He'd love to get a misstep out of Menendian's hand, too, right? Oh, yeah. This is even better for Luis if he gets into a misstep fight. He's clearing a path for his ancestral. Now what? Does Luis respond with Ancestral here? Is that the play? It's got to be tempting. The only reason not to respond with his Ancestral right now is your fear of Mr. Misdirection having a misdirection in his hand. Yeah, I mean, it's similar to game one in that there's not a lot of hurry, not a lot of rush to, to force this through because um, he could draw a blue card and feel much safer. But sure. yeah, it's, cer it's certainly on the table as a play. This is more than I normally see Luis think about something. Or is this is that Ponder resolving? Okay, he did not respond. 
That was Steve thinking about the ponder. Sorry for accusing Luis of actually contemplating a play for more than five seconds. No, no, it never happened. Luis's decision-making skills take about as long to uh, come to fruition as his giant eight-pound burritos. They, they go quick. They are not on the table for long. <laughs> I don't think Emrakul is what he wanted to draw, although Show and Tell could change his tune there. We do have our first Monastery Mentor sighting, officially. True. That is the white card that Steve just drew. So is he going to gush? Maybe play that Mentor? Looks like yep. it. Yeah, with no land drop for the turn, or no land in hand to be the land drop for the turn, that makes a ton of sense. Get a scalding tarn and a pirate blast off screen. Sure, we'll make way for him soon once he plays his land drop. So Luis actually has a pretty nice answer to the mentor in Toxic Daily. Yep, yeah, Toxic Daily is a great answer. Hmm. Steve's hand is light on blue cards. He's got all of the pitch spells in the world, but he can only cast one of them, which is an interesting spot to be in. Certainly would love for any of those other spells to be blue. I think he'd like his hand a lot better. Oh, you know what I missed the first time? Luis knows about that misdirection. He resolved Gataxian Probe on turn one. Oh, I, I honestly thought that was Steve casting Gataxian Probe as a typical Delver card. No, no, it's Luis. That makes perfect sense. I did not notice that either. Yeah, the misstep war was over the ponder, but the card below that in Louise's graveyard is a pro. And so Steve Steve can't really afford to fight this toxic deluge with basically only one counterspell, despite his hand having five counterspells. <laughs> and Louise can actually just cast Elish Nord here and it will resolve. What? Black Lotus Mox Jet Elish Norn? That seems good against Monastery Mentor, not going to lie. Now he's facing a seven-card hand and kind of has to go super all-in to do it. But it works, right? Is tapped out. He knows about the Pyroblast, the Wear Tear, like the Force and the Misdirection, I think. So you basically has Steve come up with a second Force and a second Blue card. Right. And the answer is, well, he got halfway there. Toxic. Okay, he's going Toxic Deluge. He's not going to sink a Lotus into an Elishnor. Right. I mean, if he knows about two counters in hand, is basically sweating two blue cards, it, it is reasonably likely that, that that's what he's facing. Steve Although he knows the Tundra, that. too, because Steve actually played a fetch land after returning the Tundra to his hand, so he knows about the Tundra as well. Mm -hmm. Big through time. That turns on more counters. If he doesn't need to counter anything, he gets to cast Dig. That, that was a big draw. And Mox was a little draw. And so I, I think, I said this last game, but I think Luis is in a lot of trouble now. <laughs> this one is, is a lot harder to get out of when his action spells are just so weak. You know, having two dead cards effectively in hand. I mean, he can cast the... Elish Norn would not have been dead last turn. Right, Elish Norn's not a dead card, but if Elish Norn is alive, it turns Black Lotus into a discarded card. So he's still basically looking yeah. at most three cards. Man. That's fair. Yeah, he can hard cast the Force of Will here. Yeah, it's a good play. But, yeah, it's funny how this Pyroblast, with Steve's gush, no fast bond action, it's hard to have Pyroblast lying around. Not that he needs it with Force of Will in this direction. Steve contemplating whether he wants to fight here. Does not a, a huge deal whether he does or not. I'm not sure what he'd be afraid of to cast it, although because the odds of hitting you know whatever blue card you want as a replacement anyway are so high. He's going to use the misdirection. Yeah, using misdirection over force makes sense because you're saving a life um, if you're not trying to hit ancestral recall. Which at this point basically can't be because why hold it for nothing. Yeah, and he knows that Luis saw it in his hand, so its value goes down once once your opponent knows it's there. Yep. 
and assuming your opponent's as good as Luis anyway. Maybe half as good as Luis is good enough. And then... <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure exactly what he his best hits are right here. Oh, and Cecil has to be up there though. Uh, <laughs> you know, it would typically be monastery mentor, but that's not great. He's he's a land shy and can't protect anything with the force, so he's in that weird spot. Ancestral is a uh, is pretty good though. Yeah, and that was end step, so he's got Luis tapped out now. He can ancestral with Pyro back up. Yeah, that's a good spot to be. He can gush to make a land drops if he wants. He's he's just really really. I, mean, I think he's just ancestral first, right? Yeah, he, he, I'm I'm just adding more things that are in his hand. Not that they're relevant. I mean, right now the gush is relegated to being the pitch card to force a will anyway, but he yep. has the ancestral and. He's not gonna. He he did. He was. If he did had ancestral, he would have gone up to eight cards in hand, even when he had a land. It would have been either nine. He would have either been discarding two or making playing a land and discarding one. So he declined. I might have just cast that while Luis is tapped out. But. Yeah, I would have cast it too, just because I, I don't mind discarding if I can hit my land drop. Also hitting my land drop. Right, is right. Really good. And there's the graph digger's cage that you predicted, and everyone who's ever played against Oath would predict Steve would bring in. But is also I think a dead card. We certainly nothing, nothing that matters when you have nine in hand. Well, yeah, we certainly have not seen an oath from Luis. Although Steve doesn't know that. Yeah, Steve is a uh, winning in a route. He's got more counter spells than Luis has cards, and Luis has multiple dead cards. But strangely enough, interestingly enough, if Luis just draws to see you, he's We'll be able to resolve show and tell in two turns. Um, it's a four hour. Yeah. So, uh, Steve, I assume, has access in his list to strip mine. I don't know if that's true. We haven't seen one yet. So, he will be able to dig to that to try to get around the Seiju. But, of course, Luis still has to drive, which yeah. is uh, not necessarily easy to do. So, he drew a misdirection, so he can, he can fight a little bit if he wants to. You can cast Ancestral, hard cast Misdirection, get them both countered, try <laughs> to show and tell, but that's just going to get countered too. Um, you know, in, another, in another world where, where Steve has four counters in hand instead of six, maybe. but uh, It's only five counters in Steve's hand yeah, and right. three card drawing cards. True. Um, he's... <laughs> here. The thing is that having the Tundra in play is not doing you anything, so bouncing it and replaying Volcanic Island kind of leaves you in the same spot. Although, not even sure what you're trying to hit off the gush. Like, he's not even going to cast any threats if he draws them, I feel like. It's kind of just an odd game. But yeah, we're discarding Pyroblast. That's the stage of the game we're at. <laughs> <laughs> Mental misstep is another good draw. I mean... If this game continues on this base, this is something we've seen in these games before where Steve has seven counters in hand and Luis is able to win through slowly building up a hand. Uh, the fact that he has no answer to this dig through time is rough, but <laughs> you can cast the Ancestral and misstep a Pyroblast and uh, misdirect another counter, so he can take a lot of cards out of Steve's hand. The problem is the Ancestral doesn't resolve and then the dig does. Um, and Steve will still have... I believe still have a gush in hand. Yeah, but I mean, Luis knows he's got to go for it now. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, this empties a lot of cards out of Steve's hand to give him a better chance of uh, of hitting of, of winning if he hits something. But Steve's hand is kind of perfectly sculpted to stop this. Actually, he gets to take everything, right? If yeah, Steve forces Luis misdirects, and Steve has to force again, so it actually does empty Steve's hand. Which means but if then he, the dig resolves. Yeah, the dig resolves. That's the that's obviously the huge problem. Uh, the pyroblast doesn't actually do that much. So if the dig bricks on good counters, let's say he hits fluster storm and mm -hmm. things like that, Ellis Norn could resolve. Um, I don't know how many swords to plowshares in the Liker and Steve's deck after sideboarding. Right. Good question. Swords to plowshares is very good against Ellis Norn, where it's not as good against Emrakul and Gristlebrand. Of course, it kills Gristlebrand, but you know they just get to draw seven. It's too late. Yeah, we saw that in game one. Steve had the sword against Gristlebrand and didn't even want to play the game out. Right. So he, he may be boarding out his, his swords to plowshares. All of them, or, or a lot of them, I'm not sure. All right. Well, Steve has concluded, yes, it is worth throwing away the rest of his hand to stop the Ancestral. 
and then he presumes resolve this dig through time. It's, in, it's interesting that Luis pitched to misdirection rather than sack his lotus for it. He's got well, plans for the lotus. Him, his game plan, I believe, is just after OS Norn next turn, pray. So, with that being the case, like. Yeah, it, no, it's, I, I didn't say it was wrong. It was just interesting. But, I didn't pick up on that option at first, but yeah. So, yeah, Steve could actually it. wear tear the lotus here, make Luis sad. He's going to well, be busy casting these preordains, though, I think. Right, and he's going to want to leave up Pyroblast, so. Mm -hmm. I think the Lotus is safe. I mean, Lotus hasn't done anything with it yet, so it doesn't look threatening. No, it doesn't. But, in fact, it is. And these preordains need to hit something, or Elish Norn really is going to resolve. Preordain finds Mock Sapphire. That's not very exciting. One more preordain. Is Luis really going to resolve an Elish Norn here? He can't win this game. He be... had five counters and three card drawing spells. That was his hand, right? That was his hand. He, he discarded Pyroblast. <laughs> that turn. <laughs> that turn, in fact. Now it's Monastery Mentor, which is worse than blank against Elish Norn. He might tap mana for it. It's true. Wow. I mean, what he if he doesn't wear Tear the Lotus, he's going to be a very sad man. And he doesn't, because why would you wear Tear the Lotus? You wouldn't. And that no. mental step is, well, would normally be Swords to Plasir protection. Like, Steve has the Pyroblast, but wow. I don't know if Swords are in his deck. I really don't. <laughs> Elish Norn. LSV Elish Norn. The signature card. The Grand Cenobite. Makes Forbidden Orchard a much better land now. Spirit Token can go away. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Okay. This game's been crazy. How does he keep doing this to Steve? This is absurd. Uh, to be fair, though, Steve is still up 2-1 oh, in the series. Oh, and he top decks Treasure Cruise. Great draw. That, I can't imagine a better draw than that. No, that seems like the right card to top deck. But I, he may not have cards in his deck that can win this game is the interesting part. If the swords aren't in there, he can't play a threat. Good point. Like, and th there may be swords in the deck, there, but there may only be one or two. There may be zero. Like, L LS Norn might be game. I don't think it is, but it is possible. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Steve hasn't found anything yet. He's cruised and gushed, and all he's come up with is a preordain. Yeah. Monastery Mentor's off, and, he, and his preordain came up with a mental misstep. What is this, a four-turn clock? Three yeah. if he cracks the Scalding Tarn. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> a little bit surprised he played Scalding Tarn there. Yeah, I, I think that was probably just a mistake. I don't know, maybe he's put something on the bottom with the dig that he wants to shuffle back in? That'd be the only reason you'd want to play Scalding Card. Yeah, but, I mean, there's no reason to do that now. Nope. Here comes four damage. Unbelievable. <laughs> Luis trying to even the series between these two at two matches apiece. I mean, the ones Luis has won in the regular season have been crazy amazing wins, but Steve does have the trophy. <laughs> Yeah, and he cracks the, the Scalding Tarn. Where was the fourth match? Didn't they just play twice last year? Or they played the tiebreaker for the one seed. Oh, there was a tiebreaker match, of course. Yeah, they had to play a tiebreaker match for the one seed. So, it looks like... I think Steve preordained two cards to the bottom because he drew a mental misstep off the preordain and then fetched to take a turn off the clock. So, well, we Scott Vargas, ladies and gentlemen. Anybody want to know why he's on my team? 2-0 <laughs> win. Steve had five counters, a dig, and two gushes. Luis was just it's the same way he won the regular season match last year. Steve had a million counters. Steve likes to have more counters than you have cards. So Luis is like, okay, I'll just do nothing. I'll hold on to this Ancestral Recall. I won't cast anything for you to counter. Eventually, you'll have to start discarding. 
and then we'll fight. I can't believe that happens. I mean, I said it game one. I said <laughs> it in the playoffs last year. I can't believe that happened. <laughs> yeah, both games, right? Yeah. No, both I. Games. Steve seemed to have him. I, I think that in game two, Luis was as close to 0% as a person can be. Um, <laughs> He had a three-card hand against six counters and two card draws. <laughs> or five counters and two card draw spells. That's wow, I just, I'm watching the chat, by the way. <laughs> Luis, they're saying GG's. I mean, obviously, they, they're both impressed. Um, Luis was saying, was hoping you'd have zero swords in post-board, which seems reasonable, and Steve said you were right. Yeah, no swords to plash here. That Elish Norn was just lethal. Yeah, that's crazy. And um, he cast the through time, needing to find another hard counter, but thing is, those decks don't play that many hard counters. The two Force of Wills just went. Like, they, they were involved in the fight. So, I don't think there was another Force of Will that was involved. But at most, he has two more Force of Wills. The Fluster Storms, the Pyroblast, the Mental Missteps, they were all dead. So, if Steve needed to wear tear the Black Lotus to stay in the game, and that's not a line that people are going to take. That's an odd right. line. I mean, totally. he had three to cast and Pyroblast to leave up. And Luis won the game. All right, we'll tell you what. How about you and I step out of the booth? We'll let the two of them come in. They're scheduled to cast the next round anyway, so nice. we'll, we'll hear the decompression from the two of them live. That's next matchup is going to be Rich Shea against Bob Maher. I'm curious to see what decks these guys are on. Stay tuned, guys. We'll be right back. <laughs> 